Dan here, hope you're doing really well. In this lesson, I'm going to give you a few pointers for your walking bass lines. Now, the first thing I think to do is to understand a bit about the harmony. You hear two five ones, one six two five ones, that kind of language a lot. And so what you want to do, and this occurs in every style of music, and I really recommend you learn this inside out. I've done another video on this, it's a bit more in depth, but that's just knowing the harmony of a scale. So here's C major. And the backing track and the PDF, by the way, I'll put a link so you can download those. It's mostly in C major, a bit of modulation, but here's C major. So it's got C, D, E, F, G, A, B. Those are seven different notes. And on each of those notes, there's actually another scale called a mode that exists. And then triads and arpeggios are built on that. Now, seventh chords are used a lot in, in jazz music. So what I'll do now is I'll just play, I'll just go through the C major scale, I'll go across one string and I'll just play the seventh arpeggios that come from C major or any major scale. It's pretty much a law. So I've got another video with a, with a sheet and everything that you can see exact the exact shapes. But you have a major seventh. That's the one chord, and this is the the language of of musicians. They'll use Roman numerals um, for the different degrees of the scale. So the one chord's major seventh. The two and the three are both minor seventh. The four chord is major seventh, exactly like the the one chord. The five chord is a dominant seventh. The six chord is a minor seventh and the seven chord is a minor seven flat five. So you've got four different chord qualities and they're used a lot in jazz. So when you're hearing two, five, one, it really makes a lot of sense if you understand this. So the two and the five in the key of C major, the two is the D minor seven and the five is the G seven. Modes. Every single one of those notes that I played in the scale, you can build a mode from that. And that's really important. So let's just say you've got a 2-5 in the key of C. You've got D minor 7, and the 5 is the G7. Now that 2 chord is built on a Dorian mode. And the G7, the 5, is built on a Mixolydian. I know these names sound confusing. It took me a while to learn the names, but really they're not that confusing once you learn them. You have seven different modes, and I can't tell you how much music, not just jazz, is created from this knowledge. You really should learn it. I really recommend you do it. It's fantastic. I've got a few other videos based on that, but back to the 2-5. You can play a Dorian over that. And you've got your Mixolydian. So knowing your harmony and the modes underneath each of the degrees of a major scale really, really will help you with the note selection. And after that, now, like I say, this is a bit of a, a whistle stop tour of walking bass lines. I'm, I'm going to be missing out a few things and I'm going to be just skimming the surface. But there you have some note selection. Actually, before I move on, um, the 2 5, let's just stick with that example D minor 7, G7. You can just play the, the arpeggio based around that. And you don't have to play every single one of these notes. If you're just starting out, just use roots, thirds and fifths. That's a triad. You'll hear different styles of music as you. This is really great for your ear as well. But once you've got a few notes that you understand that you can play and you start to recognize these chord symbols on musical charts, then you can start to add a bit of rhythm to this. In the intro, I started off by playing two notes per bar. So I was just going, um, this, is the, this is a bar, one, two, three, four. Just doing one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Now the walking part of walking bass lines generally refers to playing four quarter notes per bar like this. So 
difference. One, two, three, four. And that forward motion, that walking motion gives you the, the name walking baseline. But don't forget two per bar. It's just a lovely feel. Like if you're in a gig, this is something that sort of happens spontaneously and you listen to the drummer, they might give you a nod or, or what have you. Different sections might call for for um, playing two to a bar. And you, you're in control of the rhythm here. You really are as a bass player. So you've got your walking feel and you've got your two per bar, but here's something that's really important that you, absolutely essential to know when it comes to jazz, and that's the swing feel. Not every jazz tune uses swing eights, but this example, and in this lesson, I'm gonna to stick to that. Now, what that means is this. So you've got one, two, three, four in rock, pop music, funk music, generally that's um, the the eighth notes are split up evenly into two. So you've got one and two and three and four and, and those are eighth notes. But in jazz you get this swing fill and that's where you subdivide every beat into three, into triplets. So one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. That's a triplet, one, two, three. If you connect and combine the first two triplets and then play the third, instead of da 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 da, you get da 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 da. So, uh, now, it's really important to have this underlying feel because for fills and for little skips and rhythmic interest, you can add in the the swing quavers or eighth notes and some of those triplet things. So something like this. Da, da, da. Hear that? It's not really like blues where you're going swing feel or shuffle as it's called commonly in blues you're playing that rhythm a lot more but in walking bass lines stick to the walking feel and then add in some of that swing feel as you go but it's got to be something that's internalized something that you feel and something that's just very very you know within you a really really common approach when playing jazz is to approach chords chromatically so you know the chromatic scale is just when you let's say you start on a c third fret just play every fret that's the chromatic scale and what happens is when you are playing a walking bass line as a bass player you can really draw the listener and that your bandmates into where you're going so for example the first little bit of the backing track goes c major 7 a minor 7 d minor 7 g7 if i just literally play the roots i'll play two to a two to a bar I'll go. not extremely interesting. Now, what you can do is you can approach every chord you're about to go to chromatically, either basically either from a fret below or a fret above, and it will start to sound quite jazzy like this. So I'm just going C, approaching the A minor seven from one fret below, approaching the D minor seven from one fret below, and then let's approach the, the G seven from one fret below. Let's do one fret above. Little mixture. Now, since the bass is a very patterned instrument, you can actually see where you're headed. Here's another good tip. If you play a major scale like this, so the C major scale, I'm going fret three, five, seven on the A and the D strings. And I'm going four, five on the G string. You can literally learn that pattern and number the notes. One, two, three, four, five, six. And there's your two, five, one. Three, six, two, five, one. You can literally see the degree of the scale very closely with that pattern. And then you can see that there's a little gap between those notes. And that's your chromatic notes. You hear that little bit? in that little swing feel I was talking to you about. So you can really easily just, just in practice, I'm just making stuff up now. You can just be playing that really, really simply and just connecting things up using, using chromatic tones. Now that just brings me on to another point. I know there's a lot of stuff here. So, you know, bookmark this, rewind, you know, go through this video again, because here's another good thing to do is to put a metronome onto beats two and four. So you're, you're hearing sort of jazz feel as you're going, I'll do that now. I'll stick to very, very simple yeah, chord progressions using that pattern and using chromatic notes. Everything 
I was doing there was really simple. I was just kind of going two to a bar mostly. I love these little skip kind of rhythms. Now that kind of thing, and that's that, t t t having that triplet underlying swing feel really at the forefront of your mind. So that's just basically chromatic approach tones sound really good when you're, when you're approaching any chord. Touched on this a bit earlier, but you've got two ideas to think about here. Chord tones and scale tones. So here's a chord, let's do, let's do D minor seven. We've got one, three, five, seven. That's how you build a chord, you stack up in thirds. If I keep going, I've got a nine, 11, and a 13. Now that is actually like playing a scale this way, vertically, okay? So you've got vertical playing, or you've got horizontal, which is going up a scale. In this case, I'm on the D minor seven, so we've got that Dorian mode. Remember, that's the that's the two, the mode built on the second degree of the scale. So, let's just say I've got, I'm just on a D minor seven chord and that's what I'm playing. I was doing a combination of playing vertically up through those thirds and horizontally through the scale notes. So that's just something to, to have in mind, is that you have two ways basically that you can play. You can play a lot of these chord tones and you can mix them up with scale tones. And if you really listen, which you should, to a lot of walking bass lines or any bass lines for that matter, they really are just comprised of these notes, scale tones or chord tones, and you'll learn to hear them. And if as a bass player, especially doing walking bass lines, it's quite important to outline that, that vertical, you know, the chord tones. That's a really, really good thing to do because you're, you're spelling out the harmony as you go. With that in mind, there are two things now I want to talk about. One's contour, one's voice leading. I'll start with voice leading. So a common thing that a bass player might do when you're first starting walking bass lines, let's, let's stick to that D minor 7, G7, the 2-5. is to go, right, there's a D minus seven here. There's a G seven there. So I'm just gonna go. So you've gone from the fifth fret of the G of the G string, as an example, all the way down to the third fret of the of the G, because that's that might be where you know there's a G seven. That's a huge jump. Voice leading is where you connect voices within a chord, that's just the notes within a chord, or an arpeggio as a bass player plays, smoothly. So instead of going, I might go. That is the, the flat seventh, the minor seventh of the D minor seven chord, the C, the fifth fret of the of the G string. Now in practice, you, you would, um, you would just slow this down and figure this out until the point where it becomes automatic. But the nearest chord tone here to G7 is actually one fret lower. It's the B on the fourth fret of the, of the G string. So, you do not need to jump to a root all the time. You can go to a third or a fifth or a seventh. And that is a way of connecting up the chords in a much smoother way, which, which relates to contour. Think about a hill, a mountain, you go up and down. Now you can shape a walking bass line. Listen to the grates and your your hear lines going up and then down and then they're not jumping in a you know big like I did here. Maybe you might want to do that but yeah, you can hear the contour there is going up a little bit down using a bit of chromatic motion and using a bit of voice leading to connect things up a little more smoothly and it sounds a little more musical. So when you're playing jazz, you don't have to hit the root all the time. Uh, just, you can be free to hit whatever comes up in, in the moment, okay? Other styles of music, you may want to focus a bit more on the root, but in jazz, you don't have to. A quick tone tip, what you can do to simulate the sound of an upright is just to get that fleshy part of your palm here, do a sort of a karate chop movement, put it by the bridge. And you begin to sound 
something a little bit more like an upright. That can be good for certain sections. Otherwise, right over, Victor Bailey used to do this a lot, just plucking right over the, the end of the fretboard. Everything in this lesson so far has been in the key of C major. Now, what jazz tunes do a lot is to use very simple chord progressions. So, for example, the 2 5 1, you know, D minor 7, G7, C, but then move, move around to different keys. And at first, it can look a bit complicated, especially if you look, look at a tune like Giant Steps, which seems to be in lots of different keys, and it is. But it's just a bunch of 2 5 1s in different keys. So, once you know a 2 5 1 in one key, and you're able to move it around in different keys, it starts to unlock a lot more jazz tunes. So learn your circle of fifths and fourths. And just learn your keys. So C major is quite an easy one to teach because there are no sharps, there are no flats. But circle of fifths is where you just add a sharp in a fifth every time. It's just the five is the magic number. So you start in C major, you go up to G, and you suddenly got one sharp. You go up to D, you got another sharp, A, another sharp, each added in a fifth. So this isn't a circle of fifths lesson. I'm going to do one soon, actually. So make sure you subscribe to catch that. But just learn all keys. And exactly the same thing happens as before. Every single key will have that exact order of, of seventh chords that I mentioned earlier. As with any style of music, you need to immerse yourself in jazz if you want to get good at it. So what I recommend you do, I'm going to put a list of easy jazz tunes to learn to start your walking bass lines with. I'll put that in the link below and I'll put some links to things that you can learn. So I would say So What by Miles Davis. That's a really easy tune. It just stays on a minor seventh chord for ages and then goes up one semitone. So it's, it's all Dorian tonality. So you can just use one scale and practice walking along that and then just move it up a semitone. So that's quite an easy one. Fly Me to the Moon, Autumn Leaves, Blue Boss. So there's a few others. And I'm going to do individual lessons on these and break them down. So make sure you subscribe to catch those lessons. But that will show you that the harmony I was talking about earlier on pretty much um, you'll see that in a lot of jazz tunes. There's a few other things you need to know, which I'll show you on those videos as we get to them. But really listening is the thing. One thing I've been, I've been listening to a lot lately, I absolutely love it, is Killer Joe, which is a great tune by Joe Henderson. And the Quincy Jones ver version, which Ray Brown is playing on. You've got to listen to the masters, and Ray Brown is one of the best. And if you just listen to him, you'll hear him connect up these chords in a beautiful way. And he's really famous for his was really famous for his amazing fills and use of rhythm. So listen to that, uh, the Quincy Jones, Killer Joe version, and you'll just get so much from, from, you'll hear the ideas I've been talking about played by a master. And as with any style of music, you've got to learn that. You've got to, you've got to learn it as well as you can and play along to it. And, and that's how you'll get all of this together. Thanks very much for watching. I hope you got something from that. Please do subscribe to the channel. And if you've got any questions, put it in the comments below. Get in touch and I'll, I'll answer them. I've been doing a lot of videos recently based on people's comments, so feel free to leave one and I will get back to you. Thanks very much for watching. Have a great day.